Hey everyone, can you believe it's episode five already? I cannot. Uh, I am making such good progress and I am really, really, really excited to show you guys. Um, so some of the major things that I've been talking about are finally starting to happen and things are coming together and looking beautiful. So right now, just to kind of show you where it began, I'm going to flash up some photos of what this area used to look like when it was a garage, when it was a driveway and overgrown. So I'm going to put up a few photos and then I'd love to walk you in and show you the changes that we've made. Oh, you've come a long way, baby. <laughs> so here we are. This is the new layout that I was telling you guys about. These are the new raised beds. And honestly, I could just squeal with joy. And I actually may have, <laughs> I've come out here just in awe of how beautiful. You know what? I have a coffee in my hand and I'm going to put it down right here. Hold on. Here's me putting my coffee down. <laughs> Don't fall. I need you. I need you coffee. Don't fall. Okay. Sorry about that. So, all right. You know what? Let me pause it. Pause. Pressing pause. I want to show you what I'm doing over here quickly first. It's certainly not as significant as the other things I'm going to show you. I decided after a lot of thinking about it to continue the sprinter boxwood. Yes, they are quite close to the fence, but I want a rectangular shape. I've decided that that's the key and that's what I want to do. I have them all grow together. I'll keep them probably no taller than they are right now. And then they'll eventually grow together and form a nice sharp straight hedge and it'll be a rectangular shape. And then I can picture filling it with all sorts of plants kind of floating above. I left that area open there where I'm going to put some perennials. I moved one, <laughs> one little lonely fox glove that I had started from seed last year and they're starting to reseed, which is awesome. So I'm gonna kind of plant some perennials in this area. I'm done talking about this because it's boring compared to this. I'm gonna do the same thing over here too. So, oh, they look so good. They look so, so good. These are three by three cedar beds from Gardner Supply Company. I really uh, made sure, you know, these were an investment. My first ones were, you know, my first initial step I'd never had raised beds before, so they really were not holding up. They were to get held together with dowels in the corners, and they were just starting to buckle and break. These are like, are, these are built like a tank. Mark put them together, really straightforward. They have beautiful steel brackets inside. So Mark just built the first one for me, just to show you. That's, and now I need to level it out and maybe scooch it over a little bit, but I have some obelisks that are gonna go in here and then I'm gonna put a matching one on that side and then the rest up ahead. Um, that holds the corners together and then I, I love the little copper caps. I think that they're so pretty. Um, they just look so, so good right here, you guys. So I have, this is rock foil. And honestly, I took the boys out to the nursery to pick out some flowers for their secret garden, which I'll also show you. And they just jumped out at me. They're a perennial here. They're a spring perennial, so they won't bloom too long. But that, that beautiful what fluffy white was just calling my name. And I planted some pansies and then a couple cabbages in the corners. And these will get massive and fill this space too. These are obelisks from Shop Terrain. I shared this on Instagram the other day. Someone asked me if I made that. No, I didn't. If I had enough. Uh, supplies and things like that. I'd love to make something like this um, and I'd love to give something like this a try but honestly my hands are like look at my hands you guys. This is from all the gravel and the raking. Oh my gosh. Um, even with gloves you know you take them off after a while because they start to feel cumbersome and oh my hands are, are hurting but I'm not complaining because I'm so happy and I'm so fortunate and so lucky to have this space that was once a driveway. I just can't get over it. And this is, to me, this feels like next level. This feels like what I wanted it to be from the beginning, but really didn't have it well thought out enough. Um, so I planted my sweet peas that I started 
on these obelisks. Now these are about four feet tall, so it's probably not gonna be tall enough for the sweet peas, uh, but I really wanted to plant them there, so I did. <laughs> I may regret it later, but they'll just, I don't know what they'll do. We'll find out together. <laughs> um, but sweet peas are one of those plants where they are cut and come again. The more you cut them, the more they bloom, so I'll just keep cutting on them. Uh, most of the varieties that I planted get to be about six feet tall, so. Yeah, you do the math. Anyway, <laughs> got the same little mirror image here. Oh, I love it, you guys. I love it. What do you guys think? Do you like it? Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Really, I, I'm super excited. Um, so this will be a collection of pots, but not in this crazy kind of random mishmash that it is right now. I'd like to really maybe have a lot of herbs and, and more organized fashion here. But what I've been doing is going through and kind of figuring out what do I want here um, and, and what's gonna stay. So I have a dwarf blueberry here and a dwarf raspberry there. I've got a pot of strawberries, a rhubarb. So things, um, I'm really just kind of thinning things out and, and figuring out what I want to stay here long term. And then I'll have a couple little pots and things. I've got the rhubarb forcers. I'll be <clears throat> possibly putting it in one of the beds. Looks so good. Now these are six by three. And it's so important, you guys. This was hard. This was no joke. And the hard part was moving gravel and moving soil that was already in designated areas from the prior beds. Oh, it was a lot of heavy lifting. So if you're planning on doing something like this, please definitely take your time, sketch it out, think it out, plan it wisely. At the time when we laid out our previous beds with the one long bed and the two you know, others and then another long bed, it just was not functionally, uh, it, just, it just did not function for me at all. I thought at the time, you know, I would make a turn and then come down this way with my garden cart and it just ended up not working at all for me. Uh, it was too tight. It didn't look right. It kind of blocked the, what will be the shed. We're gonna start working on that in a couple of weeks this weekend. We can't. The following weekend, we'll be pulling down the garage door, which my mom and dad are gonna use on their garage, and I love it. They have a two-car garage, and then they're gonna uh, order another one to match, and I think it'll look beautiful. So I'm happy that they'll be able to use it. Um, but we'll be making a Dutch door from that door I showed you guys with the diamond shaped glass panels and just, oh, I can picture a little cottagey window boxes and windows and I'm just looking forward to it. And having a straight path right to that door, it's gonna be so great. So you can see I'm starting to plant things out now. I've got some sunflowers I started in trays. These two beds are empty right now. Um, I've got some nasturtiums that I always plant in my raised beds. These are completely edible, beautiful. The asparagus is way too tall. I gotta cut that out. I've got some strawberry blonde marigolds I started from seed. This is um, red flame, I think, cauliflower. I've never grown cauliflower, so those are starts from burpee. Looking forward to that. And then in here, you can't see them because they're marinating under there, but I've got some ball dahlias. Um, Cornell Red, I planted in here. Some more sunflowers, and then a row of Ivory Prince Calendula in the back there. I'm just popping things in. I'll, you know, once the space is here for a while, I'll be able to get a feel of it and get kind of like a routine down of what I want to plant. So, starting over again. Seems like I'm always starting over. <laughs> I don't want to. Um, Okay. Oh, I can see my drip actually turned on. I don't want that. I'm going to have to turn it off. But it's working, so that's good. That was another uh, huge issue for me. I had the drip all configured to the previous layout, so then I had to, like, trench under this soil and run more tubing and just relocate it all. I almost... I was this close to scrapping it because we get so much rain here, and I do like to water by hand, but to have the drip if it's already set up since I set it up before just put in the extra effort and and just do it because I'll regret it if I don't if we go away on vacation or we do anything and I don't feel like coming out in the heat I have it here to turn on so that's a good thing my garlic is sad I had to transplant the garlic which I've never done before I really hope it makes it but we'll see it's it's not looking it's 
it's not having its finest moment right now. And then I did plant my red gold potatoes in there, which I do, I love to plant the red gold potatoes. If you guys have not planted potatoes, even if you don't have space, maybe get some grow bags uh, and grow a few potatoes. Oh my gosh, they're so good. It's They're nothing like what you would buy in a store. They're so just yummy and, and creamy and tasty. I just love homemade potatoes. Homegrown potatoes. I love homegrown potatoes. Um, okay. Walking backwards, backing up, backing up. So I'll be cleaning all this up. There's the espalier that we worked on in the last video. Doesn't it just look so much better? Oh, I feel like a cohesive theme and a plan is finally coming, coming together. And I am just so, so happy with it. This little corner is making me so happy. What did I want to say to you guys? So yeah, if you think that you want to do something with gravel, definitely plan it out. Choose your layout wisely because what was happening was, and I'll put up a little couple video clips here if I can find them. I am trying to capture the process as it goes along. I'm holding this with one hand right now. I just lifted this raised bed. This is the one that has the asparagus in it. Um, my husband has the kids at the Sonic the Hedgehog movie right now. So I'm going to carry these over to the other side and then I don't know what, I guess we'll find out together. <laughs> you know, you, I would lift the beds from the other thing and then you have this huge cake of soil then the soil starting to fall into the gravel and then I'm bailing it out with a shovel and shovel for shovel kind of running it over and putting it in another bed and into another bed until it's all gone then you're left with this layer then of dirt and mud and rocks and things all mixed together so I was out here with my big metal rake sifting through it um, you know I would rake it rake it rake it and kind of get all that loose soil to fall down because there isn't any asphalt. We had the asphalt removed, uh, no asphalt under here. So I was able to rake it out as best I could and then rinse with a hose and then the water would, I'm sorry, the soil would fall down to the bottom and then it rinse it again. There's still some parts in the back there that you can see are a little mucky. So I'm just gonna have to steal some gravel from other parts and, um, and, and bring it over or buy some. We had like a couple tons of this delivered and dumped into the driveway initially. That was fun to rake out. I just don't want to rake gravel ever again. <laughs> Never again. Um, but you can see all the junk that was once sitting here is now sitting here. We're making good progress. We're making good progress. Nice, fresh new growth on the boxwoods coming in. Um, so all good things. I'll be revamping these areas quite a bit. I'm going to follow through and do the boxwoods along the back of there too. This area is wider than that area. But I'll probably move the urn this way so it's centered in the rectangle. Um, we'll see. We'll see. And I, do, I want to do something different with my window box, too. I think I want to go. People have commented about it being black. It's really dark green, like my door here. I think I want uh, white. I think I want a white like beadboard, beadboardish looking vinyl. Um, I have one in mind. I think it's called the Cape Cod uh, from Maine. That's who makes this is Maine, M-A-Y-N-E, I think. And I know I could always paint it, but I can't stand when things that you buy so that you don't have maintenance that you're, you know, you're then making have maintenance. Um, I, yeah, I don't want to do that. So I'd rather just probably pop that one up on marketplace offer it to my mom and dad I'll, I'll do that first <laughs> I always do that first and um, probably get a white one if I can if I can find one so let's come on back come on back look my clematis is all butted up and getting ready to bloom this one's Guernsey cream it's gorgeous this is Zephyrine Druin rose she's thornless you guys if you're looking for a completely thornless rose this is the one this is the one and I potted up a couple tomatoes. This is an atrocity. This whole area needs to get reworked. So that's what I wanted to say. If you've got, if you guys have got uh, a, a lot to work on, I used to be the type of person where I would come out and I still do it to a certain degree because you know, we're gardeners and that's what we do. I'll go, oh, I'm gonna go out and prune something and then I see something else and then I go do that and then I see another thing. And then the next thing you know, there's like a pile here and a pile here and a pile here and 
you know, you're just kind of scattered. So with this, well, with the fixing this garden video series that I've been doing anyway, it's kind of been keeping me on, on track and keeping me on task and like focused on one big thing. So this is the big thing. We'll be doing the door and refacing that next. That's huge. And then, you know, I'll feel like this area, it's always changing. Things are always going to change. You know, that's the, the great thing about a garden. But I don't want major things to change, like, like the beds or the layout. The plants can change and, you know, the pots can change. But big things, no, I'm tired. I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to do big things like that anymore. Um, but this is a mess. It's a mess, mess, mess. I also need to cut the grass. It's a mess. I see it. I know it's there. But in my mind this year, I've I've really had to say, you know what? Pretend it's not there. You'll get to it when you get to it. Don't even go over there. Don't even look at it because I know it needs to get done and I know that there's a lot to do. So once I get done that big project behind me, then I'll move on to this big project. And I do have plans. It's actually given me more time and forced me to slow down in other areas where I'm like, oh, I need some color there. Let me plant that there. Oh, ooh, I better stick something there because there's a hole there and it doesn't look right. And then maybe I'm just acting impulsively. Do you guys do that? And then you end up like changing everything later. I do that. I'm so guilty of that. So this has really forced me to kind of slow down and plan things out a little more as I see this changing <laughs> and looking worse and worse <laughs> before my very eyes, all those weeds, my goodness. Uh, but then you got to focus on the focus on all the good things. Oh, I'm so happy with the greenhouse. Like last year at this time, I was standing here and this was not here. So that's a huge, huge advancement in my gardening journey and, and making my yard and my garden what I want it to be ultimately. Um, I, I'm just so happy with this view. The tulips are looking gorgeous. The, the topiaries are just looking beautiful. I did some trimming on my spiral here. Uh, I talked about that actually a little bit on Instagram the other day. I get asked a lot of times if I made the topiaries or did I buy them that way. So for the most part, except for my chicken, you guys saw my chicken. <laughs> um, for the most part, I bought them the way that they are, but maintaining them, that in and of itself is, you know, you're keeping it that way. If I didn't trim that Alberta spruce in the back, it would just fill in and look like a, a hot mess. So I got that in 2019. I'm going to put up a picture of, for you guys of what it looked like back then because three years later, it's come a long way and I've done a lot of shaping and maintaining and it's it, it's such, such a joy for me. It really is. I love to come out here and like prune and deadhead and you know, the topiary thing, trimming on the topiary. I just, I live for that. That's like Zen calm moments for me. So pick up a topiary, you guys. I got most of the, all these at Lowe's. That one's my favorite, that big boxwood ball. I found them at Lowe's and, um, you know, they're just fabulous additions to the garden. So this view is like stealing my heart right now and making me so happy and just so thankful. Mark and I, really, really worked so super hard building this greenhouse last summer. Um, oh, look. Oh, it was a goldfinch. I think I scared it with my big mouth. <laughs> um, now there's one of those stinking house sparrows. Um, but anywho, it's beautiful. I'm happy, and I'm happy you're here to watch all these amazing changes as they unfold. Let me show you guys the boys' secret garden. So... What is that? I'm always afraid to walk back here <laughs> because you know, you turn a corner and you just don't know sometimes what might be beyond. You can see we've got a lot of fix up to do here. Okay, all right. So I like to do one of these. I'm gonna do one of these like back up, back up, go this way to see what, I'm walking through a tree right now, you guys, cause I don't want anything jumping out at me. I don't need that. No, no, okay. I need to move that gorilla cart because it looks bad, but out of sight, out of mind. I didn't want to look at it anymore. So we laid the landscape fabric here because we have 
these horrible thistle weeds, which I still need to pull out, um, they will never go away. I use a great tool that does get the tap root, but this whole back area, as I mentioned in a previous video, used to be just filled with weeds. It was just a space with no purpose. And now, oh my gosh, my boys are so excited. If I sound stuffy, let me try not to whip you around too much, but the pollen is insane. Oh, I, you can't see it at this angle, but even the roof of the um, greenhouse it is just, you can see the yellow haze. I have a massive squeegee and, and a big pole. So you guys are going to see me doing that at some point, I'm sure. I'll slowly turn because I don't like to make people motion sickness, <laughs> have motion sickness. So I have this bird bath. This is something that I, it was one of the very, very, very first garden pieces that I added when I moved in uh, 20 years ago. So it just will forever have a spot. It might even find its way back into the main garden. I put an old potting bench back here for them. I put the white bench that was there here so the boys can sit down and admire their work or take a little break, a little umbrella. I've had that for years. I get questions about that. I think I got it at Bed Bath & Beyond when my son was born. So eight, nine years ago almost. But look, we've got it all set up for them. One bed for each of my boys. They picked out some flowers because I told them the importance of adding flowers for the pollinators into their vegetable gardens. So they pick petunias and dianthus. They can use, you know, I know this doesn't, this, this is clashy. It's a little clashy clashy. I don't care. I want them to have a ball and plant whatever they want. Sky's the limit. I'll be replacing that kind of shabby lattice there. That was so temporary and then temporary became like 10 years later. <laughs> so I'll be replacing that with something better, but still something that's a trellis and they will be able to maybe grow cucumbers or whatever kind of vines that they want on there. And there's even a little bit of space beyond there where we could put maybe a, a large container of something, whatever they want, whatever they want. So a space that was just like, a desolate no man's land overgrown with weeds has now become something that my boys are like super excited about. And I'm super excited about it because they really want this and, and I want them to have it. I love it. Teach them young, get them out here digging in the dirt. They've always had an inclination to go out and want to help in the garden. And now they'll be able to have their own special area. Makes me super happy. I'll keep you guys updated on this. I'm stuffy. I'm sure you can tell I sound all nasally. I sound like Fran Drescher today. Um, okay, so that's it. That is my update. I feel like it's a big one and it's a good one and I'm excited. Still so much to do, but little bits at a time, little bits at a time. Um, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. It's a journey. It's a process. This I knew as soon as we put the other beds in that it was wrong, the layout that I had, but I just did not have the energy to fix it. And now I do. And I'm so glad that you guys are here fixing it with me. I hope you guys are enjoying your spring gardens. I hope this inspires you. Um, definitely share if this does inspire you. You know, subscribe if you're not subscribed. I'd love you to watch this journey as it unfolds. I'll be coming on you here every week. You know, sorry I missed last week, but I did come on with the uh, Espalier video. So I did wanna um, come on a bit, but it's these fix up videos that really do it for me. I hope you guys enjoy it too. And I will see you next week, guys. I hope you're all doing fabulous and enjoying your gardens. Thank you so much for watching.